I finally got all my wife's DVDs and Blu-ray discs uploaded to a Jellyfin media server. And she's happily watching her TV shows and movies all around the house. But of course, her demands does not stop there. Now she wants to be able to watch her stuff when she's not at home. In this video, we will set up something called Dynamic DNS, DDNS for short, which will enable her to access our home network when she's out and about. So how does one allow access to their home network from the general internet? Well, we just need the external IP of our router, right? Well, not quite. Once you have the external IP, there are a few things you need to do to allow traffic in from the outside world. You can set up a port forwarder that takes traffic to certain ports and then route those to specific servers that know how to handle that traffic. Or you can set up a reverse proxy that can take the traffic and route it to the appropriate internal servers. Or you can set up a VPN and allow outside connections to behave just like that machine was sitting on your internal network. There are various technical setups and security considerations for all those solutions. But the main gotcha is that unless you paid your ISP for a static IP, you are likely to have a dynamically assigned IP address. What that means is that at any point without warning, your ISP could reassign you a different external IP address. For normal usages when all that you are doing is web surfing and streaming Netflix, you will never notice the difference. But if you allow access from the outside world, then this becomes a problem because you don't know when your IP changes on you. This is where DDNS comes into play. With DDNS, you can have a subdomain name like homeserver.yourdomain.com and then the DDNS can automatically track when your external IP changes and then react accordingly. This way, you don't need to memorize your home IP address. You can just reference homeserver.yourdomain.com and your DDNS provider will automatically route you to your home network. There are a number of vendors who provide DDNS service, ranging from DuckDNS, NoIP.com, DYNU, CloudNS, Cloudflare, etc. A lot of these are free if you only need a handful of subdomain names. And of course, if you are a business and need more, you can pay for more. I will be using DYNU.com for this demo. After signing up for a free account, let's jump to the DDNS menu and then select Sign Up. You have two options here. You can either use one of the many domain names or you can use your own if you have one. I will create the server named Monkey Videos under their top level domain of freeddns.org. Once I hit the Add button, you will be asked for your external IPv4 and IPv6. This company is actually pretty smart and they have it already figured out. So I actually don't have to go and do that myself. But it's always good to double check to make sure. To get your external IP that your internet service provider assigned you, just pull up a browser and then type in the URL https colon slash slash whatsmyip.com and you can see what your external IP address is. Or if you are a typing kind of guy or gal, you can just type these commands and get your external IP address. So you can do a curl-s of ipv4.icanasip.com or from api.ipify.com or from ifconfig.co. For this demo, I am not going to bother with the IPv6 address, so I will just go ahead and disable that. And you can change the time to live value, the TTL, uh, from the default of 120 seconds. But I don't see a reason why we want to do that, so I'm just going to leave that alone. And then I'm going to hit save to see the feedback on the top right corner here. So now we have successfully mapped our third level domain name of monkeyvideos.freeddns.org to our external IP. And we can test it by going to a terminal and then just typing ping monkeyvideos.freeddns.org. And look at that. It is pinging my external IP just like I planned. Awesome. Now, all that I've done so far is to create a subdomain name which points to our external IP address. But my ISP can still change the IP address at will. So what I have to do for step two of this process is to constantly monitor my external IP 
and then update my DDNS entry if there is a change. Some routers have this functionality built in, so you don't have to do it separately on another machine in your network. Uh, usually if you go into your router settings, there will be a DDNS section. In my case, my router does have the function for DDNS, but it does not work with dynu.com. So I will show you how to do it by setting up a cron job on one of my servers in my network. I'm going to choose my Jellyfin server since that is the main server that will accept external traffic. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a terminal window uh, for my Jellyfin server. And then I'm going to edit the cron processes by typing cron tab dash E for edit. And from here, I'm going to add a line to the end of the file. So I'm going to do star slash 15. So basically this says every 15 minutes. And then I'm going to put star for everything else. So that means I want this to run every 15 minutes of every hour, of every day, of every month, and every day of the week. I'm going to go ahead and execute the following, which is something I actually got from the DYNU website. If you look under the DDNS menu, look for IP update protocol. And from here, they will kind of tell you how to interface with their uh, API, their application programming interface. And so this line here is what I'm going to modify. So I'm going to basically do a wget of http colon slash slash api dot dynu dot com slash nick slash update question mark. And then I can put in my host name. So in my case, it is going to be monkeyvideos.freeddns.org. And then uh, ampersand my IP equals 10.0.0.0. So if you look down here, this is a special IP address, which is going to get replaced with the IP address from where this request originated. Right? So because I am doing this from inside my network, as it goes out to the DYNU server, it is going to pick up my external IP. Okay, so it's going to go ahead and do that for me. And then the next block is my IPv6. I'm going to say no because I'm not going to use IPv6. And then for my username, my account is going to be Blue Monkey Forensics. And then you can also put in the password so that it knows how to uh, modify your account. Now, the one thing here, if you notice, is that you actually don't have to put in your actual password. You can actually use a hash, right, which is obviously safer because now the password is not going out in the clear or sitting in this file in the clear where somebody else may be able to look. And sure, someone can still crack the password from the hash, but if you use a decent password, the chances are going to be much, much lower. And so... DYNU also provides a link here. If you click on MD5 and uh, SHA-256, it brings you to their page where you can actually type in a password and then click on which hash algorithm you want to use. And then you just go ahead and copy and paste this back into your document. All right, so I've got this line here. And so once I save the file, so since I'm using VI, once I do uh, write and quit, you notice here that it is already executed that command. And it is going to go ahead and continue to do that every 15 minutes. We're almost done with setting up our DDNS. But before I finish, please click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. While you're at it, please subscribe if you have not already done so. It's not for the YouTube algorithm. It will just be an ego boost for me. All right, let's continue with uh, the DDNS. Okay, we have now created a subdomain name with dynamic DNS. And then we have also set up a cron job within our network to update the DDNS server with any IP changes. The last thing we need to do is to allow traffic from the outside world into our home network. What we need to do is to configure our router to allow certain traffic in and then route it to the appropriate internal server. Keep in mind that your router is probably different than mine, but it should have some similar features that you can change. So I have a Fios router, and so what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit the Advanced tab, and then select the menu for Security and Firewall. 
and then finally port forwarding. So once we're here, I want to create a new rule. And so for the uh, box or application, I'm going to type in Jellyfin because that's what I'm going to be uh, routing traffic to. And for the original port, I'm going to use 8096. And then I'm going to use the same one for the forward to port. And for the forward to address, I am going to use my Jellyfin server, which on my local network is 192.168.1.208. And for the protocol, I'm going to select both. And then for the schedule, I'm going to select always. And once I click on the add to list button, you can see a new rule added to the bottom. I'm going to verify that it is for the Jellyfin application. I'm going to route any traffic from the outside world going to port 8096 to my server at the local address of 192.168.1.208 at port 8096. And I want this to be always on. Now the most important thing is to click on the apply changes up here. Uh, otherwise this won't get saved. This is definitely a pet peeve of mine for the Fios router. Now we can test this out. So using my cell phone, I'm going to turn off Wi-Fi so that I'm going to be using the cellular service, which is a network that is outside of my house. And I'm going to enter the domain of monkeyvideo.freeddns.org colon 8096. And then I can see the Jellyfin login page. So this works. I can now log in from the outside world and see my Jellyfin server. In summary, in order to allow outside requests into our home network, we need to number one, sign up with a DDNS provider and create a subdomain and map it to the external IP of your home network. Two, configure router or set up a cron process on a machine on your home network to update the DDNS server with your external IP in case it changes. And three, configure your router to allow traffic into your home network. There are a few ways of doing this with different security risks, but for this demo, I use the port forwarding method. Hope this was useful. If you like this video, I know you will like this one here. Leave a comment below and make sure you clicked on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.